Hotep, everybody. Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, research election writer. It is Friday, July 5th, 2019, and we're alive today. Hope everybody's doing well today. We know people are getting ready for the weekend. People uh, just finished with the 4th of July, or some people say the 4th of July. And we know it's summertime, and people want to lose weight so they can look good for the beach. They, they're going to family reunions. They're going to high school uh, reunions. And we have uh, our friend, uh, licensed and practicing physician assistant, Edward Williams, uh, to give us information on the 28 day fast life challenge and the power of fasting. How you doing today, Ed? What's going on, brother? I'm doing well. Doing well. Uh, so. Oh, I'm all right, man. It's just, just very hectic, man, as we were talking about. So <laughs> very busy. And then I was at a all day event yesterday, African Unity, uh, after the African Unity Festival here in Detroit. So I was uh, with uh, there all day yesterday, man. So it's very busy. But um, I know you all have a, a new class starting up dealing with the 28 day fast life challenge. And we're hearing more and more about the power of fasting as well. So um, first off, tell people um, why you believe that fasting will save the black community. No problem, brother. Well, once again, appreciate you having me on the show. Oh, no um, problem. You know, when we look at the conditions of our community as, as it pertains to health, you know, uh, we're in shambles, you know, we, and we just have to be real about that. Um, yes. We rank very high in almost everything that's uh, negative when it comes to health. Uh, when we look at, you know, uh, heart disease, which is number one killer in, in America, um, we actually rank number one. And we're talking about uh, 76,700 brothers and sisters that we're losing uh, each year from heart disease. So when, when it yes. comes to stroke, uh, we rank number three as far as losing brothers and sisters to stroke, uh, 18,000. Uh, when it comes to uh, the complications of diabetes, we're looking at 14,000, we rank number five in that. Uh, we are told that African-Americans make up about 13 to 14% of this country. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we look at the Dallas clinics and kidney failure, uh, we make up 35 to 45% of the people who are inside of the Dallas clinics. And that's a huge gap. I mean, we make up 13 to 14% of the population, but when it comes to Dallas clinics, we make up the majority of those, uh, of those people. And we look around our communities, our communities are saturated with Dallas clinics uh, in these plazas. Uh, you have the plaza that has the Dallas clinic that's sitting right next to the Chinese spot, that's sitting right next to the liquor shop, that's sitting right next to the pawn shop. And you can go out throughout this whole entire country. When you find our population, you'll see set up like that. Um, and when it comes to obesity, you know, 37% of our men uh, over the age of 20 are obese. 56% uh, of our women over the age are obese. And so overall, you know, we just have a lot of work that we need to do. And, um, you know, my good friend, and she's also one of the uh, the coaches for this challenge that we have coming up. Uh, her name is right. Kathleen. Uh, she wrote a great blog oh, article. Her name? Fast. her name is Kathleen Richardson. She's the owner of Kathleen. Kathleen. And uh, okay. she wrote a great article, uh, you know, not too long ago about fasting. And uh, she really talked about how, you know, we as a people, we have survived Mafia, uh, also known as the African Holocaust. We survived the Middle Passage. Uh, we survived the dehumanization and the subjugation of chattel slavery, uh, the extreme right. injustice of Jim Crow, uh, mass incarceration, the terrorism that was inflicted upon us with the KKK. And we survived all of that. But here it is, 2019, and things like heart disease, strokes, diabetes, all these things are taking us out at an extremely high rate. And we, we have to really understand that these things that are taking place are not happening because we are innately defective. They are happening largely due to the, the foods that we're eating on a daily basis. Uh, the standard American diet is what I call the nutritional colonizer. And so we need to understand that this is not something that's just happening. Um, they can be prevented and in many cases they can also be reversed, uh, but we have to actually uh, do the work. And fasting, fasting is our first line of offense and our first line of defense as pertains to preventing and reversing these conditions. Okay, so explain to people exactly what fasting is. We hear about it, we hear fasting talked about in holy books, spiritual systems, we see 
different spiritual gurus talk about fasting explain to people and there are different types of fast also come on in there are different types of fast also the different types of fast as well so explain to people exactly what is fasting and how does it pertain to the 28 day fast life challenge go ahead ed no doubt so let's keep it really really simple really basic uh, fasting is the abstinence of food when we're talking about food it's abstaining from food um, but really, when we're talking about fasting in general, it's just abstaining from some type of substance. Uh, this could be TV. Uh, this could be gambling. This could be drinking. But more specifically, when we're talking about food, this is abstaining from food. Um, now, you're right. Fasting is extremely old. And in fact, uh, you know, fasting is something that it was a principle. It was always a principle, always a pillar uh, as pertains to our, our African traditions. And so essentially, all we're doing as, as a group uh, these three coaches and we're just essentially going back and picking up the knowledge that our ancestors left behind for us uh like i said fasting is old um it was always practiced it was always one of the uh the things that uh, many people were made to do before they got married uh, someone was sick fasting was one of the basic things they would do uh to heal themselves and so it's a very old practice um i know that it's become a fad now, but I just want to make sure everybody understands that this is something old, we've been practicing it, um, and it's definitely going to uh, be what we can utilize to uh, heal our, our community. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, you talk about fads, we see all different types of fads over the course uh, of, of the last few years dealing with losing weight. And we know, um, you know, two big times of the years that people uh, want to lose weight, New Year, uh, New Year's resolutions, and then going into the summer, that springtime going into the summer as well. So with the 28 day fast life challenge, uh, I know you all have 28 days of coaching. You have the uh, Facebook group as well. Uh, you have a new class starting up July 8th, a new uh, uh, cohort, a new group starting up July 8th as well. Uh, yeah. So tell people um, uh, about that and uh, how they can take advantage of it as well, how they can uh, get more information to sign up. No doubt. So, uh, yes, so Monday, starting Monday, July 8th, is going to be our uh, first day for the new challenge that we have coming up. Uh, mm -hmm. If people want to sign up for the challenge, they can go to TFL28 dot com tfl 28.com um sign up today uh because we are doing this based on how many spaces we have left available so i wouldn't kind of i wouldn't wait around if you are going to sign up go ahead and sign up today uh and so like you said it's 28 days it's uh it's three coaches so you have me i'm Edward williams i'm the founder and creative help i necessary uh like you said i also practice medicine down here in florida uh, and then we have uh, the other two coaches. Uh, we have Tiffany Davis, who is the owner of Feed Your Inner Chef. Uh, she's also an African diaspora uh, chef. Uh, what, what, also, what's the name of her business, Tiffany? Uh, Feed Your Inner Chef. Okay. Yep. And so uh, Tiffany does a, a lot when it comes to making our meal plans, uh, the recipes, the uh, the shopping list. Uh, she she does videos as far as you know how to actually make a lot of the uh, the, the foods and the meal plans. Then we have Kathleen Richardson. She's the owner of Beauty and a Barbell. Uh, she's an African holistic health coach as well as a nutritionist. Okay. Uh, she does a lot of the uh, the whole foods. Uh, she does a lot of the uh, connection between uh, foods and emotions. So, you know, a lot of us have uh, addictions to these foods, and that's why it's so hard for us right. to actually. Um, right. and now, with, what's, what's her name? Beauty and the Barbell is the name of her business, right? What's the name of her business? Her name is okay. Kathleen Richardson. Kathleen, what's her last name? Richardson. Richardson. Okay, Kathleen Richardson. Okay, go ahead. And uh, so pretty much we just came together. We uh, combined our resources, we combined our knowledge, and uh, we walked people through 28 days of a structured regim uh, regimen of fasting. Now, we have five protocols. Uh, so depending on where our members are at as pertains to their health, uh, their history, and where they're trying to go, we will uh, assign them a protocol. And that's why we have everybody uh, do an initial assessment. So everybody has to do an initial assessment. That initial assessment is going to give us an idea of what you're dealing with, uh, what right. you're going on, and where you're trying to go. And then from there, we assign you inside of a protocol. And uh, just to make sure everybody's aware, this is not 28 days of continuous fasting. You know, okay. Um, you know, this is uh, we have different protocols. We have you know 16 hour fast, uh, 22 hour fast. Uh, you know, two days of fasting followed by three days of 16 hour fast. So 
there's multiple regiments, uh, but where we really shine is dealing with people who are diabetic or who are who have high blood pressure, or they're taking some type of medication from one of these preventable condi uh, conditions. Because uh, you know we have experience. Uh, many of our members in the group uh, they also uh, are dealing with those things, and a lot of them have successfully come off those medications. And so um, you know we're just collectively helping the community move forward as pertains to our health. Okay, excellent. So it's not 28 straight days of fasting. Uh, fasting is part of it. There's 20 days of coaching, health tips, etc. What are when during the period of time that people are fasting? What is included in that as far as what they're taking in uh, as far as dietary water? Is it juice? Is it what, 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 during that period of time of fasting? I explain exactly what type of fast you all to do. You, you all do. And, and just one second, Ed, for those just tuning in, I'm Michael M. Hotep, host of the African History Network show, founder of the African History Network. We're speaking with um, licensed and practicing physician assistant uh, Ed Williams about the 28 day fast life challenge and the power of fasting, especially for African Americans. Go ahead, Ed. Um, yes. So Essentially, this is a water fast. So, um, you know, they're only doing water. Now, we do have a water fast. Okay. Uh, essentially, this is a water fast. Now, based on their protocol, they may be doing a 16 hour fast. They may be doing sure. a 24 hour fast. You know, whatever their protocol that we have them in uh, during this period, the only thing they're drinking is water. Now, we do have a few exceptions, um, which may be, you know, if, if they drink coffee, uh, you know, it have to be black coffee with nothing else in it, uh, maybe mm -hmm. black tea or green tea but they, there can't be anything added to it. And the reason why we emphasize water only really is because we're trying to uh, invoke a process called autophagy. Uh, autophagy, essentially, if you break down the word, we're talking about autophagy. Uh, this means to self-eat. Uh, this is a process that the body goes into when it has uh, been fasting for you know 12 hours, 16 hours. It really depends on your, your condition. Uh, but essentially what happens is the body becomes extremely resourceful uh, and it starts to break down the old proteins in your body. Uh, it starts to actually um, release a lot of the uh, glycogen from your, your liver. It also starts to break down fat. And so it starts to do a lot of things that will not happen if you were doing a juice fast. And so, uh, you know, juice fast or anything that has any type of calories in it is going to activate uh, the uh, regulator called mTOR. And so these are all things we break down into courses because it's actually courses. So we talk about mTOR, we talk about autophagy, we talk about hormesis we talk about all of these things that go along with fasting we break those down into actual modules and videos that people go through and they, they learn they learn about it that way they can actually continue to do this even after the challenge so uh this challenge is really just serving as a uh, really a 28 day course a 28 day class on how to rapidly improve your health um because even after they're done with those 28 days we of course welcome them to come back uh, but right. this is something that they can go out and do for the rest of their lives because that's the intention. The intention is to go back <laughs> to what we were doing before, uh, which is very similar to fasting. Okay, excellent, excellent. And everybody, you can post your questions here uh, for Ed, and we'll get uh, try to get as many of your questions answered. Uh, those watching on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, those watching on my on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotel, post your questions. Uh, on Facebook, we have Kelly, we have Trina, we have uh, Lisa just joined us, we have Mike, uh, Nellie, Tiffany on uh, Facebook, on YouTube, we have uh, Sandy, uh, Felicia, uh, Sherwin. Now on YouTube, let's see, we had a question from sandy uh she asked uh, how are people prepared to do food and fluid restriction or maybe how should people prepare like what preparation do people have to do to uh start this water fast ed right so it really depends on once again their initial assessment so that's okay. why we have everybody fill out their initial assessment i need to know if you're on medications i need to know if you have some medical condition i need to know how old you are your weight there's a lot right. of things that I need to know about you before I can, before we as a collective can actually uh, make those recommendations to them. Um, now, as far as the uh, preparation, like I said, we have five protocols. Um, you know, and so protocol one would be the protocol that I would uh, have someone on if they had those medical conditions or took any medication because 
protocol one really essentially gets them ready for the other ones. Um, but there's not much preparation, you know, uh, okay. something that people are doing when they're sleeping, you know, so, uh, and that's one of the things we have to understand, you know, we are fasting at night when we're sleeping or whenever you're, you're, you're right. down, you know, you're fasting and all we're doing is essentially adding on a couple more hours after that, depending on your protocol. So there's not much to really prepare for unless okay. we're talking about medications. And then with medications, we have to have a whole other conversation. Uh, we actually show you how to work with your practitioner um, as far as, you know, uh, titrating your medications down or decreasing it or getting off of it. And that's where, you know, uh, we've been having a lot of success with it. A lot of members are having to contact their practitioners to bring down the medication to actually get off of the medications. So as far as prep goes, um, a lot of people would just get started with it. And then from there, you know, we might have to make some adjustments, but you're already doing it. And so we have to also, you know, make sure people calm them down a little bit because um, we're used to eating all yes. across the day. We're very used to it. You know, matter right. of fact, one of the, one of the main uh, recommendations uh, pushed by the, you know, media in general, but also healthcare system is that you should eat six times a day, uh, that you should eat okay. every Some, yeah. two or three hours. And right. so usually what they have us doing is, you know, pretty much grazing throughout the day. Um, and this keeps us in, a, in an insulin dominant state and doing that over time will lead to insulin resistance. And so okay. we have what it takes to go several hours, you know, 12 hours, 16 hours, 18 hours uh, without eating. You we'll, we won't die. You'll be okay. All right. So as part of the 28 day fast life challenge, um, you deal with uh, eating the proper foods or what you call whole foods and um, a movement to improve metabolic conditions such as obesity, high blood pressure, pre-diabetes, things like this. What give us some examples of the type of whole foods you're talking about people should should eat and what makes them a whole food? Uh W H O L E, not whole foods the uh grocery store, but whole foods in general. Uh, explain that to people. Right. So essentially a whole food is just something straight from nature. Uh, okay. It hasn't been processed, it hasn't been chopped up and refined. Uh, it hasn't been stripped of all of its vital nutrients. It still has its fiber intact. And so uh, as far as whole foods, you know, Tiffany Davis, like I said, she's our chef. Um, she did, she makes all of the meal plans. And um, we have a uh, vegan meal plan. We have a non-vegan meal plan. Um, okay. Both of those meal plans, they all have a shopping list. They all have, you know, food lists and everything else. And also the instructions on how to make the food. Um, so something, you know, we're, we're very he we're heavy either whether we're doing the, the vegan or non-vegan, they're both going to be very heavy when it comes to the actual plants, the leafy greens especially. Um, and that's something that I really push, you know, whether you're vegan or not vegan, we need to eat way more plants, uh, way more leafy greens. When we're talking about spinach, kale, arugula, bok choy, we just need way more of those because of the actual uh, enzymes and the minerals right. and the vitamins that are included in them. Many of us are actually deficient in those and we may be dealing with a condition simply because we're deficient in the potassium or magnesium. Um, so Tiffany does a great job of really explaining the whole foods. And that's why, you know, it's a team of us um, because that's their area. That's where they do, do a great job shining. Sure. Whole food goes. Okay. Excellent. All right. So, um, and, and, and I think understanding the, the whole foods is, is very important as well. And this is part of a 28, 28 day, uh challenge but also it's a lifestyle change as well because that's the way that's how you keep the weight off it's a lifestyle challenge all right um let's go to another question here let's look at uh facebook i saw a question on facebook uh okay so trina wright wants to know how can uh someone that you know when you say the food link do you mean to register for this trina let people know how they can get more information and register uh for the new group that you have starting up uh july 8th uh ed yeah no problem um so what they're going to do is go to tfl the number 28.com tfl 28.com uh that's going to take you over to our uh, page uh you just click sign up add the cart and um, you'll receive an email. So make sure you check your email as soon as you sign up. And uh, we will, you're gonna request access to the Facebook group. Uh, you're also gonna get access to the membership area. The membership area has 
all your marching orders. You, you know, it's going to have your uh, information as far as doing your initial assessment, uh, requesting access to the membership, uh, the Facebook membership. Uh, it's going to have all the uh, the videos for the actual fast. And, you know, what you need to do. So very straightforward process. Just make sure you check your email after you have signed up. Okay, and then make sure you spell your email address correctly as well. All right, and be sure to uh, check your spam folder also. Okay, so that's what Trina wanted to know. Yeah, visit t tfl28.com, tfl28.com. And then let's see, Kelly had a question here from Facebook also. She wanted to know, do you have a YouTube channel? Me? I do. Um, I'm not active on it, but it's... Uh, or, or for the... I think or for the 28 day fast life challenge or whatever is there a youtube channel also no uh so this is well everything is largely done on uh facebook and inside okay. the area so we have a facebook uh we have an actual facebook group uh, mm -hmm. we kind of call it little zamunda uh little wakanda but essentially that's where you know that's like our virtual living room for the next 28 days um, okay. we do a lot of videos in that in that uh, membership area we do a lot of videos in the facebook group um, you know, we might come on to, we might do a video as far as making the recipe. Um, I might do a video as far as, you know, just checking up on everybody, seeing how they're doing, answering any questions. And so that's, sure. that's one of the, you know, real strong benefits of it is that they can actually ask questions of the people who've been doing this for a while, uh, versus waiting for an appointment three months to, you know, get in. All right, no problem. And then when you listen to like the podcast of our shows, things like that, you're here the ad for the uh, 28 day fast life challenge as well. You've seen it here on the African History Network before. Okay, so I'm on your website right now, and then people should when they go to your website, they should click on sign up. Is that what you click? Okay, and yep. sign up is well, I see join hashtag TFL 28 now. Uh, they should click there yes okay all right so yeah when you when you go uh to the website you'll see a little video right at the top right below that says join hashtag tl tfl28 now okay and and then that, now do you have a, uh also a, 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 your own youtube channel as well um ed yeah i have my, i have a youtube channel but as far as for the uh, the challenge uh, everything's yeah. going to be on the facebook and uh, okay everything's going on the facebook. facebook page and um but in an actual facebook group okay all right no problem all right let's look at uh some other questions here what um okay now shante on uh facebook asked is this safe for children so so what's the minimum age that someone can enroll in this program so this is largely focused for adults um okay so people who are 18 and older um, 18 and older most, most people in the group are probably you know 35 and older that's what we seem to uh, attract as far as people in the group um mm -hmm. so i do not we do not recommend this for uh pregnant women or okay. for kids um you know for pregnant women and it's a good question you get that question a lot uh pregnant women for the most part they, they need a lot of nutrients um you know right. they, they take the time when they need to really listen to their body and so if they're hungry you know this is what they need to be eating uh, but it's the, the type of foods that they're eating needs to be on point uh, and so for someone who is uh, pregnant or trying to get pregnant I recommend a, a diet that's very high in plant-based fats um, they need to become very familiar with avocados uh, you know due to the fact that that leads to uh, optimal brain op or brain growth uh, for that child um, also for those pregnant mothers they need to get out to the Sun everybody needs to get out to the Sun but the pregnant mothers definitely need to get out into the sun okay. uh, now it's uh, for kids I recommend that th now so I've been fasting since I was 14 you know I, I wasn't doing it on purpose but it's just you know how we grew up uh, wake up in the morning nobody's gonna you know get up to cook breakfast mom and daddy gotta go to work they're both up and out the house by five to six o'clock uh, so we were pretty much relying to get to school to eat the school breakfast but bus drivers probably gonna get there late and if I did get to school, the last thing I was thinking about was uh, food. I'm thinking about girls, so I'm probably walking some girl to class. So essentially, right. my was 14 all the way to now. Uh, a lot of my normal eating schedule was uh, from 12 to 6. And um, <clears throat> so as far as kids and should kids fast, I don't recommend uh, fasting for kids. I do recommend that they be more balanced with their meals, you know, you know lunch, dinner, but making sure it's whole. 
um, and cutting out the, the fruit juices. So I, there's no room whatsoever as far as concerned for uh, fruit juices. Um, that's largely due to the uh, the high fructose corn syrup. Uh, it really impacts the liver of those kids. Uh, it will make a 10-year-old liver look like the liver of a 64-year-old uh, when they're drinking those juice on a daily basis. And uh, this really sets the stage for childhood obesity as well as childhood uh, diabetes. So right. stay, please stay away from the juices, stay away from the sodas if you're a kid, stay away from mm -hmm. the Now, when you say the juices, are you, are you talking about like 100% fruit juice all without that. added sugar? Or are you talking about a lot of these other juices with the high fructose corn syrup, high amounts of sugar? Like what, what exactly are you, are you referring to when you, when you talk about the juices? So I'm talking about, you know, you pretty much anything you go to the store and you can buy, uh, you mm -hmm. know, the, the, I don't know if it's called high C or, you know, the juicy juice or right. little boxes of juice, you know, all of those things are really, really when it comes down to it, they're toxic for the child's liver. Um, it's going to, uh, it's going to initiate the process of fatty liver. Uh, fatty liver is really the foundation when it comes to uh, insulin resistance as well as uh, diabetes and pre-diabetes and also PCOS. And so now we have younger ladies uh, being diagnosed with PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, at an earlier age. What, what, what is PCOS again? Uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Okay. Uh, essentially, it's diabetes of the ovaries. Uh, really, that's what it comes down to because of insulin resistance. And um, and so when children are drinking that on a daily basis, and this is why you have, to, this is why you, it's hard to trust this system and this food industry because you know, they put made with vitamin C, uh, you know, now made with 100%, you know, vitamin A. Right, right. They're all so it's, very, it's very tricky. It's very deceptive. And so that's another reason why you shouldn't trust them at all, point blank period. Um, but they're really trying to, uh, they're doing their best to try to trick their, trick the mothers to make the mothers think that, you know, the juice is good for them. Um, but okay. when those children are drinking those juices in the cereals on a daily basis, it's going to affect their liver. And that's something that probably won't be seen until like, you know, three, four years down the road when the child gets diagnosed with prediabetes or uh, PCOS at a young age. Okay. Now, Cassandra on uh, Facebook said, appreciate, appreciate this topic. Um, uh, right. Trina on Facebook asked the question, what is the benefit uh, of, of this fasting program um, that doesn't for a person who does not have high blood pressure or does not have diabetes and just wants to lose weight? What What is the benefit of this program for them? So that is the benefit. Uh, you will definitely lose weight. Um, more specifically, you're gonna lose fat. So once again, um, you know, this challenge, this, this fasting regimen is specifically designed to prevent and reverse the effects of insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. So people have to understand uh, that insulin resistance is the foundation for many of these conditions that we're dealing with. I'm talking about high blood pressure, high cholesterol, obesity, uh, pre-diabetes, diabetes, PCOS, before many of those things can actually manifest itself on blood work or a blood pressure cuff or on a scale, insulin resistance is the foundation. That's what those things are actually growing out of insulin resistance. And so the fasting challenge will prevent and reverse uh, what the steps you take if, you, if, you're, if you're complying with it uh, will help you turn that around uh, you're definitely going to lose weight. Uh, I just had a member reach out to me, uh, I think it was two days ago. I posted mm -hmm. it up on the uh, the Facebook page. But yeah, I'm looking at it now. She lost 57 pounds. Okay. She lost 57 pounds. Uh, she decreased her blood pressure. Uh, we had another brother who lost, uh, I have a video posted up on my Facebook page. He lost 40 pounds. Right. Now, like almost two months ago. I, I don't even know where he's at now as far as his weight loss. Right. Uh, and, you, and you have it on your website also. Yes, matter of fact, I think it's like the first video on there. Um, okay. So you're definitely, you're definitely going to lose weight. Uh, matter of fact, you cannot lose weight if you are eating frequently throughout the day, uh, the way that we have been told. When people start to lose weight from eating frequently, largely is due to the, the quality of the food. Most people are actually eating better. But as far as continuing to lose weight, you're going to get to a plateau, and that's because of insulin. People are ignoring the hormone insulin and this affects as far as uh fat loss goes and so okay. if you're in an insulin dominant state that's going to inhibit lipolysis uh lipolysis is the breakdown of fat and with fasting you're going to make yourself more insulin sensitive 
All right, so let me ask you this question, then we'll go back to a few more questions from YouTube and Facebook. And we have Asaru on YouTube who's, who's joined us. Um, and let me see who else we have here. We have Larry uh, also on YouTube and on Facebook. We have Lorenda uh, who said, I try to push the bottle of water uh, for the kids. Um, let me see. All right, so let me ask you this question we hear the debate about what type of water you should drink all right should you drink spring water should you drink you got one group saying you should drink alkaline water you have another group saying oh the water out the faucet is <laughs> the water out the tap is fine okay what's wrong with the water out the tap uh so for this program in just in general, because you're also, you know, you're a licensed and practicing physician assistant in the state of Florida. What type of water should people drink? Which, what type of water do you recommend for the fast? And just in general, what type of water should people drink? Yeah. And, and I want you to think about uh, that question and that confusion. And that tells you a lot about where we're at, you know, as far as a uh, society where we're having to question the type of water that we're drinking. And that's a very common question. Uh, yes. So common, it's so common that we actually have a whole entire module on that water. Okay. Uh, that module is done by Captain Richardson. Once again, Captain Richardson is the uh, the African holistic uh, health coach and nutritionist, and so she goes through and she bodies that. She did she did a lot of work as far as um, why we need water, uh, why water is so important. And um, to be honest with you, I don't want to do. Uh, her any disservice by trying to answer this question for her because this is largely uh her area of expertise as far as okay. the type of water we need um but i believe she would say uh spring water um now I, and she also talks about uh i believe she talks about you know alkaline water or the different types of water distilled water and everything like that the pros and the cons um but largely she talks about how we need water and how you know our bodies are made up of 70 percent water the planet earth is 70 percent water our cells mm -hmm. percent water uh so there's a pattern and you should not disrespect that pattern we, we definitely need water. right okay all right um now cassandra on facebook wanted to know will it help control or uh maintain a would it help with uh arthritis if somebody has arthritis will this program uh help with with that yeah, so um we had, okay. Go ahead, um, go ahead, so, Ed. Thanks. So two, two things. Um fasting decreases fasting helps decrease inflammation. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing is that a lot of times uh the joint pain may be due to weight. So if uh this sister or brother, I'm not sure, uh, whoever asked the question, if they have excess yeah, weight, uh, it's Cassandra asked the question. Yeah, go okay, ahead. So the sister had if she has excess weight, that's a little too much for her brain. Mm -hmm. that's causing a lot of stress on those joints and so just by losing weight alone that's going to decrease the pain uh just by decreasing the inflammation uh which is which is something that fasting does it's also going to uh decrease the pain from the arthritis as well too um, but also we talk about autophagy autophagy like i told you is uh, about the degradation of how the body does a self-cleaning process and also does a lot right. of cartilage as well too um but also many people who are arthritic or having dealing with arthritis are also dehydrated as well. Uh, those joints may not have enough fluid in it also. Um, and they may also be taking medications that slowing down the absorption of the water because of the pain. So yes, to answer the question, yes, it does that in multiple ways. Um, we have members who have said that their, their arthritis has definitely improved as well too. Okay. And, and just explain to people quickly, then I have a question dealing with the um the vegan food explain to people uh briefly exactly what is arthritis i mean all of us remember <laughs> watching sanford and son and fred sanford talking about his arthritis what what exactly is arthritis uh so yeah so uh arthritis you know anytime you see uh the the prefix a r t h um we're looking at uh, something dealing with the bone and the cartilage and anytime you see anything ending with itis uh, we do, we're talking about inflammation. So essentially, this is inflammation of the uh, the joints. Okay. Uh, this, this inflammation of the joints could be something that's coming from uh, wear and tear, mm -hmm. um, you know, injuries, 
uh, but also weight as well too can cause the joints to rub on each other more than what they should. So in between, in, with, with our joints, <clears throat> we, have a, we have a space called the interarticular space. Uh, within that space, we also have uh, fluid, the joint, the joint fluid. And we have cartilage on top of the bone. So if we're talking about the, uh, right. the legs, we're talking about the femur and the tibia and the fibula. And these things should not be rubbing on each other. Mm-hmm. But due to injury, due to weight, due to food as well too, uh, these joints may start to rub on each other. And over right. time, that wear and tear will start to cause where the uh, cartilage is no longer smooth. Now you have cartilage that has a piece of the cartilage actually missing from it. That's going to increase the inflammation. That's going to cause the pain. Um, and so that's essentially what arthritis is in a nutshell. Um, and it is something, you know, there's also always a debate whether or not the uh, cartilage can be repaired. And so whoever asks that question, I would tell them to uh, look up uh, fasting effects on uh, arthritis or fasting effects on cartilage regeneration, and I'll okay. be pretty impressed with you find. Okay, excellent. All right, and then Jackie has joined us also on Facebook. Just a few of the people watching. All right, so let me ask this question. Um, you, you talked a few minutes ago. Um, you talked about uh, the ve- you have um, vegan and non-vegan uh, food or, or choice or something like that. Uh, 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 menus, I think you said. Um, Right. Food program, vegan and non-vegan, right? Right. Okay, so um, the question, explain to people what is, right. vegan is a form of vegetarianism, right? And explain to people what vegan actually is, because there's confusion about it. Right, so uh, when we're talking about someone who's vegan, um, the, the confusion between vegan, the, the confusion usually comes between vegan and vegetarian. Uh, someone mm-hmm. who's vegan is all plants. Like they're not taking in anything animal that's coming from an animal at all. Um, right. So we're talking about honey, um, nothing like eggs, milk, nothing. Whereas right. the vegetarian, they may drink milk or use honey or they may uh, eat eggs. Um, but a vegan is all the way that way. So right. yeah, that's pretty. Pretty straightforward as far as what a vegan is. Uh, everything yeah, usually, is, usually vegans uh, they don't consume any animal products, whether it's dead animals or milk, dairy products, things anything. coming from animals. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, we had another question here from. Let me see what was the question. Okay, Jackie said, "Great information to deter inflammation." Uh, Okay, Cassandra. Yeah, yeah, Cassandra. This is um, uh, Ed Williams. He is a licensed and practicing physician assistant in the state of Florida, and he's one of the three uh, coaches with the Fast Life Twenty Eight Day Challenge. Okay, everybody, visit the website tfl28.com, tfl28.com for more information and to sign up. They have a new class starting up um, July twenty, uh, July eighth. Okay, Monday, July eighth. Uh, let me see. There was a question on YouTube. I wanted to get to. Let's see. Okay, Zozier. Okay, yeah, Zozier on YouTube asked the question. Um, will that type of fasting help with muscle cramps when hard running or running hard? With hard running. Yeah, yeah. Will, so, will, will that type of fasting? Will that type of fasting help with muscle cramps? So when you're running hard and you get muscle cramps, will this type of fasting help with that? Yeah. So. Uh, I'm a proponent of always getting to the root of the problem. So mm-hmm. will fasting help with it? Yes, no, maybe, but as, but why are you having cramps? Um, right. You need to understand that we're talking about muscles and we're talking about contra- contractions and uh, relaxation with the muscle fibers. Uh, that's largely something that's being controlled by the electrical system of the body, the nervous system of the body. Um, and that electrical system needs proper electrolytes. Uh, that's why they're called electrolytes. Um, yeah. And so if you are cramping, I, I'm definitely concerned about the levels of uh, potassium, uh, magnesium, and the other electrolytes as far as your levels, because that's a sign, you know, that's a sign that something is decreased, something is wrong. Um, maybe maybe you do need to stretch more, um, but I'm definitely looking at your level of potassiums, um, potassium, I'm sorry, magnesium as well. And this is why uh, the greens are such a huge part of our fast, uh, when, we, when we do break our fast, when we make sure we break our fast with a green smoothie. Um, and these are gonna help replenish those electrolytes. 
So will the fast help with uh, cramping? I can't really answer that per se, but as far as uh, why you're cramping, we could definitely help out, help, help figure out why you're cramping. Um, because, you know, and here's something that you should do uh, for the brother or sister who asked that question. I recommend that you get some Epsom salt uh, from the CVS or Walgreens or whoever. Um, you know, I don't know if men take bath. I don't take bath. I do showers, right? But if you take a bath, like, you know, actually put the Epsom salt in the, uh, the bathtub uh, with hot water. And you need to uh, soak in that Epsom salt for about three to four times a week um, because you are most likely deficient on potassium and magnesium. Uh, Epsom salt is largely uh, magnesium salts, all right? So it's going to help relax those muscles, uh, but also you need to get back into stretching as well, too. Okay. And 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 repeat that uh, last part again because you're breaking up a little bit. Um, uh, repeat, we'll repeat what you just said again, Ed. Yeah, so <clears throat> I was pretty much saying that, um, you know, as far as will fasting help with his cramping? Yeah. My answer was essentially, you know, it may help. But I can't say for sure. But what I would say is that we have to figure out why you are cramping because cramping is not something that's natural. Uh, crample, cramping usually uh, represents a, de uh, a depletion or a lowering of electrolytes. And so okay. what we would do is make sure that you are getting the electrolytes you need. Uh, that's why we make sure we break our fast with the green smoothie. Uh, as you know, with the leafy greens, they have a lot of the electrolytes that you need. Um, but also, I would recommend that the brother, uh, you know, get some Epsom salts. Uh, put Epsom salts in a hot tub and also sit in that hot tub of Epsom salt for about 30 minutes, uh, about three times a week, and do that along with stretching until he no longer has any cramps, as well as water as well. Okay. And, uh, yeah, that was Zosia that asked the question. He said he's a uh, former football player who built up muscle in college. All right. So, yeah, you, sometimes they have – they can uh, experience uh, muscle cramps. All right. Now – uh, what type of um, special promotions do you all have going on right now for people uh, registering for the Fast Life 28 Day Challenge, Ed? Yeah, so right now we actually, uh, our normal price is usually $97, but right now we have a 50% off. So if anybody who leaves from here and signs up today, they'll actually get 50% off. Uh, so essentially it's going to be $49.95 or something like that. Um, and that's 50% off of the normal price of $97 or $99. Uh, and so that's today. We may have it tomorrow, but if they want to sign up, I definitely recommend them sign up today. Okay, excellent. Now, um, oftentimes when we hear about people losing weight, there is the uh, aspect of accountability as well as um, support from family also if you especially if you live with other people okay what role does the, what role do those two accountability and family play in uh losing weight getting healthier but specifically the uh fast life challenge yeah i mean it plays a huge role you know um your circle or your family or whoever's around you um can be a large part of the reason why you succeed or you fail and that that that's also uh, up to you as far as you know your filter and what you allow inside of your head uh we play a huge role as far as the support and the accountability uh the way we help out with accountability is because for these 28 days every single day we are checking in with you via email uh, with five simple questions because we have five habits that people are practicing on a daily basis and all you have to do is go down answer yes or no yes or no uh, this is something that takes less than 30 seconds. You're going to get it in your email every single day. Uh, the coaches will be watching this on a daily basis. Uh, we will actually calculate your score at the end of the week as far as how compliant you are. Uh, that way you can see that in the weeks where you get the results you were intending to get, it's because you were compliant. Um, but also we come back on a family meeting. Uh, on Sundays we do a family meeting and we hash things out. We figure out you know, what was standing in your way uh, what kind of what kind of obstacles did you face? But we right. also break the wins, and so we're going to be there continuously through the 28 days to support you. Uh, it's not just the three coaches; it's also a group of over 100 people in that challenge who's all, who've already done the challenge. They're doing it two to three times, four times again, and they're mm -hmm. going to be there to also support you and help you go through and walk through whatever you're going through as well. And so okay. we, try to, we try to do the uh, the African village. Uh, Thing where we have the uh, the youth 
you know, right. shoulders, you know, because they've already done it. They know where to go. And so they're playing the role of the steering wheel and the brakes. Uh, the new ones who are coming in, they're unsure. They're not they having really done it before. And so, you know, the community as a whole is really helping out the new people who are coming in as well as supporting it. Okay, excellent. All right. Well, before we get out of here, um, let people know uh, anything else that you want them to uh, understand about this program and understand about uh, their health. And once again, uh, they have a new group starting up Monday, July 8th. Okay, go ahead, Ed. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I practice medicine, like I said, down here for the um, nutritional system, PA, for those who know. Um, also, nutritionist, uh, you know, health coach, all those things as well, too. But our people, you know, we have to really look at our circumstances, look at our situations. Sure. Our conditions are continuously getting worse. Um, the medications are increasing, but the outcomes are remaining the same. And so we have to ask ourselves, is this really a healthcare system or is it a disease management system? Because I am of the opinion that it is a disease management system. Um, in fact, I mean, I'm of the opinion that it's actually a burning building. When it comes to those chronic conditions, not all aspects, but when it comes to those chronic conditions such as the blood pressure, the heart disease, uh, diabetes, prediabetes, their goal, their, their idea of progression and actual uh, success is how well they can manage you with medications. Right. There's very little talk as far as the food. There's very little talk as far as the fitness. There's very little talk as far as any of those actual health coaches. Uh, the mainstay of therapy for a lot of these practitioners and actual protocol is going to be medications. What you need to ask yourselves is the people who are taking medications versus the people who are not taking medications, why are they having the same rate as far as mortality and morbidity? Why, why do you have somebody who's not taking medications and they're diabetic and they're continuing what they're doing? Why do they have the same rate as somebody who being compliant with the medications, still eating the same way they're eating, but they're still ending up with the same complications as far as the amputations, the heart disease, the kidney dialysis. And that is because the medications are not effective as far as decreasing the mortality and morbidity. And I really need for my community to really understand this. The medications are not effective. And so for those who want to actually take it upon themselves to uh, look this all up, we talk about this in the challenge. Uh, we give you resources and everything. But for those who are watching this, if you want to go to uh, the NNT.com, when you go to the NNT.com, you can actually see for yourself uh, the number needed to treat, just how effective a lot of these medications and a lot of these therapies are. They're not effective when it comes to decreasing death. They're not effective when it comes to decreasing heart attacks, strokes, uh, kidney failure, dialysis. But they are very effective at making your numbers look nice. They're very effective at metric obsession. And so, the only thing, the only thing that has ever shown to reverse diabetes, the only thing that has ever been shown to actually improve a heart disease or blood pressure is lifestyle improvement. That is the only thing. And so do what you do, but at the same time, know the truth and understand that this system largely wants to make sure that you are managed and that you are within a certain range. And when you start to come outside of that range, we're gonna give you more medications to bring you back down into that range and this is a process that's going to continue over and over and over and over. Right. Okay. Um, now, Cassandra uh, asked a question. Uh, she said she's very thankful that she tuned in today. Um, she wanted to know uh, how can she find out what this program actually consists of, everything that this program consists of. And she said uh, she's taking medication for arthritis right now. Uh, she's having, you know, she said she's having problems with the knees. She wants to lose weight. Uh, so, so how can she find out exactly what this program consists of? Because I know it may, you can tell them a little bit now, but I know it's so much to talk about. Yeah. So, um, what she wants to do after this video is over, go to tfl28.com. Uh, we summarize essentially what's all included inside the challenge. But I'll tell her right here as well. <clears throat> so, like sure. I said, this is a. Uh, a 28 day challenge where we're helping you utilize fasting on a daily basis to prevent and reverse the effects of insulin resistance. Uh, with that, you're going to get a large support group. 
uh, the, the, the Facebook group. It's going to be a large support support group. Uh, this is where we're also doing our coaching. Uh, she's also going to get access to the membership site. The membership site has the, uh, the actual videos for how to fast, uh, how to work with your practitioner, um, you know, the, uh, the effects of water and how water is healthy for you. Uh, you're also going to have access to the, uh, the meal plans. You have four week meal plans, uh, vegan, non vegan. You're going to get the recipes. You're also going to get grocery lists. Uh, you're also going to get workout programs. So I know she has arthritis, uh, and that's why we made a low impact uh, workout series. And so this is a workout series where there, there won't be any banging on your joints, but you will still be able to work with a pretty good sweat. Uh, we also want to do uh, nutrition coaching. Um, you know, you're also going to get access to uh, the videos such as, you know, diabetes, the truth about diabetes, the truth about high blood pressure. Uh, we talk about polycystic ovarian syndrome and what that really is, uh, fatty liver, fatty pancreas. So you're, you're going to get a whole lot within those 28 days, but we will be there with you every single day to hold you accountable as well as support you uh, and make sure that you're successful in your endeavors. Okay. And right on the homepage, um, and when you scroll down, it says you will get fasting course meal plans work workout program and then below there it, it lays out you know what what's included okay so it's right on the home page at uh, tfl28.com all right so thanks for that um question yeah. cassandra all right so uh well look it's always good uh talking to you everybody uh, always gains a wealth of knowledge uh once again everybody visit the website tfl28.com sign up for the uh for the uh july 8th uh class that's starting up the, the group that's starting up and let them know you found out about this from the african history network all right ed go ahead uh with uh any last remarks um that's it you know um uh, <clears throat> essentially we just have to figure out what are we going to do you know as a community but also as individuals um you know very frequently i have people saying that you know they're doing well for their age and right. this person will be 45 and they've already had their first stroke we have to figure out what are what are our standards for doing well what are our standards for doing well um but also we have to figure out why is it that we we continue to think that these things just run in our family why do we think that it just right. runs in our family? Uh, why do we think that we are innately defective and we have to really figure out where that came from i mean the, the best i can do is tell you that um, a lot of this came from the uh, 1930s during the Tuskegee syphilis experiment, uh, where they came up with a term called bad blood. Bad blood was the, uh, the actual term that they used to infiltrate the uh, community at that time because they understood that they wouldn't just let the same people who was castrating and lynching them now give them medicine. So they had to figure out how, how to actually uh, you know, trick them. And so it was a term, uh, bad blood. And bad blood for me sounds just like it runs in my family where no one is really sure what that means or why it runs in their family. And so we just need to understand that it doesn't run in your family. What runs in your family is the unhealthy uh, habits, the unhealthy eating. Right. So exactly. at the end of the day, um, this challenge is here. We specifically uh, tailored it for our community. Um, we're okay. very, uh, you know, strict with our culture inside of the group. Um, and we make sure that, you know, it's us. It's, it's us. And so, um, you know, it's up to you. If you want better, you know, please take action somehow. You don't have to join the, you don't have to join the challenge yourself, but please take action somehow. Do something for yourself uh, to improve your health. But if you want help, then we are definitely the people to uh, help you out, uh, get you started, and go from there. All right. Well, look, hey, Ed, it's always good talking to you, uh, talking to you. And uh, to, uh, Kathleen and Tiffany, I said hi. I think Tiffany was on uh, watching the video as well. All okay. right. And we'll talk to you next time, okay? I appreciate it, brother. You take it easy, man. All right, you too, Ed. Take care. Peace. All right, everybody. Hey, look, we have to get out of here. Um, listen to the African History Network show Sunday, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we broadcast on 9, 10 a.m. the Superstation WFDF. Uh, we broadcast also right here on that uh, right here on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. We upload the videos to our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I M H O T E P. Uh, be sure to register for the uh, new online course uh, that I'm teaching: Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Maafa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school: Ancient Kemet, 
one of the original names for Egypt, ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. It normally, uh, we do a thousands of years of history, and uh, it's an eight week, uh, 16 hour online course that I teach. Um, we do the class live, normally Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then uh, you can ask questions during the course, live chat as well as at our online school. All the classes are archived. They're uh, archived on demand, so you can go back and watch them over and over again. Um, because of um, uh, because I was getting ready for African Unity Day uh, on July 4th, we I postponed the Wednesday class, so we're going to do it uh, tonight, okay, 8 p.m. So as soon as you register, you'll be able to watch, uh, you'll be able to join us for the Wednesday, uh, for the Friday, uh, special Friday class, and then you can go back and watch these over and over again also, okay? And then there's also about 36 hours of bonus content as well that you can watch. So the last time I taught this class live was uh, September 2017. There's been more information that's come out, more archaeological discoveries. Uh, the Clotilde slave ship was discovered, <laughs> the last slave ship that came into the U.S. that we know of. That uh, just happened. That, that discovery was just revealed like a couple of weeks ago. I mean, sorry, a couple of months ago. So there's more information that's come out since September of uh, 2017 and uh, have a lot of that information incorporated into the class also. OK, so uh, register for that. And uh, that's on sale. Uh, let's see, that's uh, $80, regularly $130. Uh, ancient Kim at the Moors and the Ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. OK. All right. So. Uh, Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Follow us on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotel. Listen to our Sunday night show. And those in Chicago, uh, I'll be in Chicago Saturday, July 13th uh, for the Black Agenda Tour uh, with uh, hip hop artist and actor David Banner, uh, Michi X, and Jice Johnson. Okay, visit the Black Agenda on Tour.com for more information. The Black Agenda on Tour.com for more information. Uh, I was in Atlanta uh, June 14th through the 16th for the three-day Juneteenth Festival. I'll be back in Atlanta uh, July 19th through the 21st for the Liberated Minds Black Homeschool and Education Expo. I just talked to Queen Thais a couple days ago. So I'll be speaking there that Sunday. I'll be there all three days. I'll be a vendor, but I'll be doing a presentation that Sunday. Okay. Uh, so visit liberatedmindsexpo.com, liberatedmindsexpo.com for the uh, Liberated Minds Black Homeschool and Education Expo. So this is a black homeschooling conference that takes place each year, the third weekend in July. OK, so I think this is their seventh annual one. This is my sixth year there. So the third weekend in July, I'm always in Atlanta. OK, so check that out as well. We'll get all this information. Uh, at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com uh, also, okay? And in Chicago, that is 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, in Chicago for the Black Agenda Tour, uh, Saturday, July 13th, and they have the location on the website. We can go to the website. They have the location. It's coming to other cities also. Um, it's going to Brooklyn, should be in Brooklyn. It's going to Atlanta August 3rd, should be in, a, in Atlanta for that. It's going, I think it's going to Washington, D.C. It's going to Houston Tech. Uh, uh, it's going to Texas. I think it's Houston. But check the uh, check the website, the Black Agenda on tour .com for uh, all the cities. OK. All right. Let's see here. Uh, OK. Cassandra said, thank you for always doing great topics. Okay, we got Michael uh, Jones here, day five of a 30-day fast for me. Uh, and then let's post this information here at, uh, we have it on YouTube also. Okay. All right, guys, look, I have to get out of here. Remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating, oh, also, oh, yeah. Remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world, because right now it's correct wrong behavior. Uh, what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon 
what you have been taught about yourself, what you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. Okay, remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.